And here are the opening remarks from all of our participants. We will start with Mr. Blake Morgan Jr. for two. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Thank you. That's better. On button. Hi, um, I'm Blake Morgan. I live at 4811 El Monte Street, Ward 2. Um, I'm running because I love the Roman Park. I think that we've got one of the neatest, most interesting little cities in all of Northeast Johnson County, if not the entire metropolitan area. And I think our quality of life and the things that go on around here make it a wonderful place to live and I want to keep it that way. Um, I'm not coming at this with a huge chip on my shoulder. I don't think there's a lot of things that are wrong. I'm not worried about the future of Roland Park because I think our elected officials that have served in the past and most importantly our city staff um, have done a fantastic job and I want to do my best to continue to support their efforts and try and make sound rational decisions about the future and, and the challenges that we may or may not face as it comes to fiscal matters, <coughs> Walmart and things like that as we you know, go down the road. Um, and that's kind of it, basically. Thank you very much, sir. We will now hear the opening remarks from Ms. Aaron Thompson. Hi, I'm Aaron Thompson. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm trying to get a little closer. I'm running for Ward 3. I've lived in Roland Park for five years now. I grew up in Wichita, and I'll tell you just a little bit about myself because I don't know all of you all that well. But I've been in Roland Park five years, as I said. Even though I grew up in Wichita, I'm not a stranger to Johnson County. My mother attended Shawnee Mission North. I had have many uh, cousins that attended Shawnee Mission East. My, I have an uncle who served on the Fairway City Council, and my grandfather covered politics for the Kansas City Star while living in Johnson County for a long, long time. So while I'm not a Johnson County native, I do have a lot of Johnson County connections. And I'm running for Roland Park City Council because I think I can make a, di a difference in the direction our city is going and help us continue the progress that we've made. My experience as a litigator, my connections in the Kansas City community, and my demonstrated leadership ability all will help Roland Park as it navigates the next four years. We've done so much right in the past few years with our dedication to the arts, <coughs> excuse me, the park, and being a leader in, on social issues in Johnson County. And these all make Roland Park a more desirable place to live. And now it's time to focus on strengthening our economic development so we can generate more revenue and provide some relief in our high property taxes. And I'm the person that can lead this economic development. I work for my family's business. I run the Johnson County office of my law firm, so I understand the importance of, of the small businesses. Furthermore, my experience as a litigator has taught me the fine art of compromise. You guys didn't think lawyers compromise, did you? <laughs> but we do. Because sometimes, even though you want to dig in and take the case all the way to trial, but that, that's not always the best result. If you can give up just a little bit and save your client time and money, that often is a better result in the end. And the same is true for city council. There's nothing to be gained from refusing to compromise. And if you come at it, if you, if you refuse to compromise and you spend extra taxpayer time and money, that doesn't achieve anything. So the best solutions are often the compromise, and I come with a fresh perspective and a willingness to work together. As a council member, I will listen to all of Ward 3 residents and work with the council to find the best solution for everybody. I will bring common sense, of professionalism, and a dedication to the community. All of this will allow Roland Park to progress, to continue to progress rather than regress for the upcoming four years. Thank you very much, Ms. Thompson. We will now hear the opening remarks from Mr. Popa. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Uh, thank you to the Northeast Johnson County Chamber of Commerce providing us this platform in which to discuss the future of our city. Thank you to everyone uh, tonight for attending and taking an interest in Rumble Park. Do this. And uh, most of all, thank you to the voters in Rumble Park who made it possible for me to be a part of this discussion tonight. Thank you. Living in Johnson County, I've seen our community grow. It's grown in a major part because of what businesses have been able to afford. 
what they provide us in wages, employment, revenues, quality of life for our community. Those are the cornerstones of success for all residents. Roman Park, now more than ever, needs a vision of what our economic future looks like. I believe that we must work with our current business community in neighboring cities to attract new businesses to Roman Park. From startups to entrepreneurships, from big box vendors to family-owned operations. In this way, we can continue to grow the community that we all know and love. Keeping the residents of Roman Park engaged and informed through this process is a critical component to strengthening our community, involving Roman Park residents, and providing them with the opportunity to share their ideas and their concerns is very important to me. Tonight, I'm asking for your vote. I look forward to the partnership that I, can, that I believe that we can build between business and community in Roman Park. As a city, we're on the precipice of greatness, and I'm proud to call Roman Park home. And I'm excited about the future of our great community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Popa. Mr. Popa, we will go ahead and start with you with the first question. Uh, looking forward, can you provide three critical initiatives that you, that you believe will move the city of Roland Park forward in the next four years. Thank you for the question. A forum like tonight uh, typifies what I think makes for good government, and that's resident engagement and transparency. As my first initiative, I'm committed to common sense leadership. My professional career has been one of service, and as your representative of the city council, I will listen to you. I will actively support your involvement. This naturally leads to transparency, as well as a vested interest by you in the future of our city. Roman Park residents deserve to be entertained, and they deserve to understand what's happening in our city. This commitment to transparency leads me to my second initiative, building and strengthening strategic partnerships with neighboring cities, local associations, and business partners. Roman Park needs leaders with eyes focused on the road ahead. I have over 15 years of operations management experience, and I will bring that perspective to the City Council. Third, we must also keep the quality of services and amenities in our community attractive to current residences, current residents and businesses. As well, we must keep them attractive to future economic partners and potential home buyers. Thank you very much, Mr. Cook. Ms. Thompson. Question to you. Once again, looking forward, can you provide three critical initiatives that you believe will move the city of Roland Park forward? The three critical initiatives that will move Roland Park forward in the upcoming years are growing our local economy, raising our sales tax revenue so we can provide some property tax relief, and we're creating a more walkable community. By continuing to think creatively about how to use our existing spaces for economic development, Roland Park will be able to create additional revenue and hopefully provide some relief from our high property taxes. We don't need to sacrifice our quality of living for economic development. The two truly do go hand in hand. We do need to focus on diversifying our local economy so we have multiple businesses contributing to a vibrant community. We look at development <coughs> of the caves and the development at the intersection of Johnson and Rowe and as two chances to start our renewed focus on economic development. And I'm particularly excited about the development at the northeast corner of Johnson and Rowe because we're working with our neighboring um, communities to collaborate on that development. I'd also like to see us further collaborate with our neighbors and explore creating a way to link up Roland Park to the existing trail system in Johnson County. I think that combined with developing the two projects I just mentioned would truly continue to move Roland Park forward in the upcoming years. Can everybody if I speak about the microphone say what you're doing? Mr. Morgan, the last question is the last uh, update. Looking forward, can you provide three critical initiatives that you believe can move the city of Roland Park forward in the next four years? I know the issue of um, you know, what can we do in terms of sales tax revenue and, and enhancements there in the wake of, or potential wake of Walmart leaving town is, is, is a big concern on a lot of people's minds. Um, and, and what do we do in the future about that space? Um, one of the things that I've done is I've looked extensively at the city budget. Um, if you haven't had a chance to read it, it's, it's a budget. But it's really one of the finest municipal budgets that anybody's ever produced. And it 
if you look at the numbers in there, one of the largest sources of city revenue is not sales tax. It has a huge effect. Don't get me wrong. I'm not downplaying that. But property taxes, which I know are sore spot with a lot of people because we've recently had to, you know, our mills could be lower. But part of that is the wake of the 2008 real estate so-called hangover at this point. Things that we can do to increase home ownership, um, reduce the amount of rental properties. We have a lot of foreclosed houses in rental in Roland Park that could have new homeowners that would pay taxes and overall lift property values. And I know that that's really only one thing out of three, but I'm running out of time. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, at this time, this stops and we'll start the next question with you. Okay. What do you think the level of services and amenities provided by the city of Roland Park? Do you believe there are too many services and amenities offered by the city? The level of service and amenities offered by the city is balanced, or there is a need of greater offering of services and amenities by the city. If you can please provide examples. Sure. I think the services and amenities are offered by Roland Park are balanced. Roland Park's not a large city, but I know that the amenities offered are important to the residents. And I can't tell you the number of people when I told them I was running for city council, the first thing they said was, please just make sure we keep our leaf removals. <laughs> 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 services are very important to people. <laughs> Having adequate law enforcement ensures our city remains a safe place to live. Residents rely on the services that Roland Park Police provide. I don't know of many other cities in the metro where if you're going out of town, you can let the police know that you'll be out of town and they'll drive by and make sure only the appropriate cars are in your driveway. So we need to make sure that the police have the resources necessary to protect Roland Park. As we build on what we've accomplished and focus on our economic development and generate more revenue, we'll be able to continue to support the amenities that we have. These amenities make the city an attractive place to live and only work to strengthen our city. Thank you very much, Dan. Mr. Morgan, next uh, to you guys. Oh, what do you think of the level of services and amenities provided by the City of Roland Park? Do you think currently there are too many services offered? The level of services and amenities are balanced, or do you believe there could be a greater offering of services and amenities? I mean, overall, I think uh, in part of the quality of life that we have here is because of the fantastic city services that we do have. I mean, We've got things that go on around here. Aaron mentioned the leaf pickup deal and you know other things like that. You know, I was uh, driving home in a snowstorm at one point this winter late at night. And I was coming from Olathe and streets were solid sheets of ice everywhere until I hit Rome. And that was fantastic. It was like, I'm coming home and I'm gonna be safe. And you know what, my streets are clean. Leewood, Overland Park, and Lenexa, and a whole swath of the city were just a mess. And it's that type of stuff that I think is fantastic. And I think that we need to take a balanced approach as we go forward to do our best to preserve those services, to preserve our quality of life. And as time goes on, if we can do things to enhance those, awesome. Um, but you know, let's let's keep going forward with what we've got. So yeah, I think we're doing pretty good. Thank you very much. That's appropriate this is not something to be What do you think of the level of services and amenities offered by the city of Roland Park? Would you care if there are many? Is there a balance? Would you believe there would be a greater offer? Well, I'd like to uh, echo what my fellow candidates over here have said. We are very lucky and very fortunate in Roland Park to have some of the most high quality city services. And I think those sets apart from neighboring community, communities the leaf removal, the snow removal, um, integrated curbside recycling the community center that we're sitting in now, um, our green spaces. We're also home to dedicated community groups like the Citizens Fundraising Initiative, the Citizen-led Strategic Planning Group, and then also city committees such as parks, sustainability, <coughs> community events. Each service, amenity, and resource helps to make our community beautiful. It helps to make our community welcoming. And it adds value to our city. The level of amenities in Roland Park is part of the reason that I moved here. I fully support quality services and amenities that raise property values, attract businesses, and grow opportunities for all residents of Roland Park. Thank you, Mr. Moore, Mr. Moore, next question begins with you. 
how will you advocate to ensure Roland Park remains desirable for both residents and business owners? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In terms of um, residents, I mean, I think we're already kind of there. I mean, I look around the room tonight and I see so many faces that I recognize and people I know, and, and I mean, that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's partly the, the word of mouth of, about what Roland Park is that, that makes it a desirable place for people who want to live, move here and live here. Um, in terms of the business environment, um, that's a trickier question. Um, we're a landlocked city. There's not a whole lot that we can do to increase the amount of, say, commercial real estate that Roland Park has available without bulldozing someone's house. Um, I don't think that there's anything in our tax code that discourages businesses. Um, what I think we need to possibly do better, when I look out my front door and I look up the street, I can count how many trucks and ladders are in driveways. We've got small businesses all over this city that are unheralded. Roofers, plumbers, blue collar folks, people like accountants that work at home, lawyers that work at home. And I think we need to celebrate some of those people and give them the recognition they deserve. And that's some of the business that, okay, I gotta stop, but thank you. <laughs> Ms. Thompson, I would ask you a question the microphone. How will you advocate to ensure Roland Park remains desirable for both residents and also business owners? Part of what makes communities healthy and attractive is their unique character to having something that sets them apart from other places. In Prosper, we need to look ahead and plan so we can build on our existing local strengths and embrace opportunities that changing times are going to present. One of the things that Cold Show people are really looking for in their, in their communities is walkability. In Roland Park, we're lucky that everywhere is within a few miles of a grocery store or a bus stop or the library or a park. So if we focus on creating a more walkable community, it's only going to make Roland Park a more desirable place for both residents and business centers. We also need to focus on diversifying our local economy. If we have a more vibrant business community full of diverse businesses, we're going to ensure that one business will not hold the fate of Roland Park in its hands. So our Roland Park's unique environment with our commitment to the arts, the parks, and non-discrimination, as well as our affordable cost of living sets us apart from Johnson County, and it really can make us a destination city and a desirable place to live for all, everybody in the metro. Thank you very much, David. And Mr. Pope, I find it to you. I will be here to this desirable well, tonight we're attending a forum in the Roland Park Community Center owned by the Northeast Johnson County Chamber of Commerce. Organizations like the Northeast Chamber, as well as business owners and community stakeholders help to inform us of the needs of Roland Park. As I mentioned before, the citizen-led strategic planning group, they dil diligently worked to put together a roadmap for our city, for our future. And I believe our residents are the majority stakeholders in Roland Park. And I believe that we should make serious attempts to incorporate their ideas into a comprehensive strategic plan for our future. Sometimes being a successful advocate, it means just listening and being open to ideas that differ from your own. I believe that I can advocate for Roman Park most effectively by providing an open door for the residents. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go ahead and start with the next question, sir. In addressing Roland Park's budget, what is your primary economic strategy? Managing and reducing expenses, growing revenues, or a combination of both? Please provide examples, sir. Thank you. A basic goal for any successful city is to provide quality services and amenities. But they must do that as efficiently as possible. Right? These services and amenities help to raise property values and attract families and businesses to a community. We must focus on growing opportunity in Roland Park. A vibrant community adds jobs, it adds employers, it adds residents, which in turn grows revenues for our city 
and from local partners. Like a good business, we must also prepare for the road ahead from thoughtful, strategic planning with contingency. That requires a commitment to a combination of all strategies. Our goal then still remains to increase quality of life and to improve attractiveness of our community for future growth. The addition of a much anticipated sit-down restaurant in Rome Park, for example, that would grow sales tax revenue. That would pro provide the amenity that's needed in Rome Park. It would make Rome Park more attractive. Working closely with partners like the Northeast Johnson County Chamber will grow these opportunities for every Rome Park resident. Thank you very much, Mr. Bill. Question to you in addressing Rome Park's budget. What is your primary <laughs> strategy? Managing and reducing expenses, growing revenues, or a combination of both, and please provide some. My primary economic strategy would be a combination of both growing revenue and reducing expenses. The best way that we can do that we can use to create additional revenue is a renewed focus on economic development. We need to continue to look at creative ways to develop the existing spaces that we have. I've mentioned earlier, but I think the caves on 48th and Row provide just such an opportunity. This development can provide a unique business site and be a real draw for Roland Park. It can also provide a central business location that we don't currently have. And as well as, we also should continue to look at the, the, develop, excuse me, the development site at Row and Johnson Drive. And our location of our city puts us in a great position to be a real draw for quality businesses. As far as creating a more efficient government, just as in business, sometimes it helps to have somebody with fresh eyes come in and look at a situation, and maybe they can see places where you can be more, more efficient and more effective. And I think that's where my fresh perspective really could help our city run more efficiently. So as I said, my um, strategy would be that growing our revenue combined with the cost cuts to the government. Thank you very much. Mr. Morgan, I know you kind of hinted on this somewhat earlier in one of your responses, but I'll ask you again. In uh, addressing Roman Park's budget, what is your primary economic strategy? Managing and reducing expenses, Roman revenues, or a combination of both? Yeah, I, I mentioned it earlier, but um, my response is actually going to take a slightly different turn. Um, one of the functions that cities have is to pay for big things, roads, sewers, um, infrastructure type of things like that big important things that cost millions of dollars and we do that by issuing bonds. If you look at our city's budget, you know, there's there's lots of little line items for things like light bulbs and employee benefits and, and stuff like that. But the really large ticket items on there are, are our bond payments and making sure that the choices that we make when it comes to our budgeting process such that we don't do any damage to that good bond rating that we currently enjoy, I think it's very important. I think sometimes people get caught up in, you know, some of their own little minutiae about this or that, you know, pet projects, and really, you know, to, to function well, we need to have a, a foresight that looks beyond the next budget cycle, but the budget cycle 10 years from now, and I think that's something that I want to bring to the table um, with my experience and, and background. Thank you very much. This talks a little bit in the next question Knowing there is a potential to be an effect discrimination ordinance may be a topic of future debate. Would you vote to repeal this ordinance? And if so, why? No, I support the ordinance. I would not vote to repeal it. We spent a lot of time and money talking about it, and I think it passed, and I support that. I was raised to believe that you fight for equality, and when you see people are not being treated fairly, you should fight to make sure that they too have equality, and that's what our ordinance does. It does not create a special class of people. It does not give special treatment to the LGBT community. It merely puts them on equal footing with the existing protections that are there for everybody else. Furthermore, polls show that 88% of Americans believe that gays and lesbians should not be discriminated on based on their, based on their sexual orientation. 75, 70% almost of millennials believe in gay marriage, and 70% of people with a college degree support gay marriage. So this really is not a divisive issue. And, and furthermore, it can be a real draw for our city. We're the only city in Johnson County that's passed just such an ordinance, and it can be a real way for us to attract young and successful people. 
So I think not only was it the right thing to do, it makes economic sense for Golden Park. Knowing that there's a potential that the anti-discrimination ordinance may be a topic for future debate, would you vote for the repeal of this ordinance, and if so, why, sir? I think repealing it would be absolutely silly at this point. Um, as I made comments in the Prairie Village Post uh, earlier this week, you know, I think uh, it's not just good public policy, um, but it's also on the right side of history. Um, for decades in this country, we've discriminated against all sorts of different people for all sorts of stupid reasons. And to eliminate another piece of stupid discrimination, I think, is just kind of the way of the world. And, but a certain, on a certain level, I mean, you know, people are going to argue back and forth about it, and they'll cast things in their own morality or religious connotations, but the fact of the matter is, is that, to a certain extent, it's going beyond our hands. Um, it, just as an anecdote, my employer recently threw verbiage into our employment policies that says we're not going to discriminate. I mean, wording that virtually came out of our, our own ordinance, not because of the goodness of their heart, but because they don't want to get sued. You know, it, it used to be a thing in the past where you could get away with discriminating like this, and the courts and, and rational people everywhere, I think, are realizing that, no, you know, this is important, and, you know, these people deserve the rights that are due to them, and so that's, <coughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Gordon. And Mr. Pope, if I look at you, knowing that there is potential to the anti-discrimination ordinance, maybe a topic of future debate, would you vote to repeal this ordinance so I think so see a lot? Uh, I agree with my fellow candidates uh, wholeheartedly. I would not repeal that ordinance. I would not vote to repeal the ordinance. Um, we're a diverse community here in Rome Park, and every voice matters. In addition to adding sexual orientation and gender identity to protected classes here in Rome Park, the governing body also enacted protections against discrimination based on race, religion, sex, disability, military status, and other protected classes that are already at the state and federal level. We must continue to look forward, not backwards, and create opportunity for all people in Rome Park. 90% of the 500 largest U.S. companies responsible for creating over 25 million jobs already have these protections in place for their LGBT employees. Walmart will be leaving. They'll be taking with it jobs and tax revenue. Our city's future demands that we attract new business to fill that void. This ordinance adds value to our city. I will oppose every effort, as I said in the Prairie Village Post, to take down that welcome sign because doing so could cripple our ability to provide services and amenities to Rome Park residents. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Cook. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, that concludes our question and answer portion of this forum. We will now move into the closing statements, and we'll, we will begin with Mr. Michael Cook, the first place. All right. Thank you again to the Northeast Johnson County Chamber, to everyone here this evening, and thanks to the Rome Park Community Center for opening its doors to us tonight. There are many opportunities, many challenges ahead for us in Rome Park, and I'm ready to face each one of them head on. In order to move forward in a thoughtful, positive manner, it's vital to, that uh, we respect and value the distinct voices of every community member. It's imperative that our representatives on the City Council continue to focus on the real priorities facing Rome Park and come together to plan real progress for our city. My professional career in operations management has afforded me the opportunity to be able to uh, work with a, a huge diverse group of individuals. I've spent fast, the past 15 years listening, collaborating, planning, and turning collective ideas into reality. As a founding member of the Rowan Park Events Committee, I'm proud of our success in bringing neighbors together, offering value to our residents, and instilling a sense of civic pride in Rowan Park. And now, I would like to further that effort on the City Council to help shape a vibrant future for our city. By helping to actively support and engage residents, building those strategic partnerships that I spoke about earlier, 
and preserving our quality services and amenities, we can build the city we deserve together. I look forward to the opportunity to serve the residents of Roland Park. And again, I ask for your support, and I ask for your vote on April 7th. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Sobo. This time, we'll now hear the closing statements from Ms. Erin Thompson. You know, my family's been in Kansas a long, long time. I'm a sixth generation Kansan. And one of the things that I love about Roland Park is it embodies so many of the traditional Kansas values that I was raised to, to love and appreciate. Kansas was founded on equality and fighting to make sure everybody had equal status. And that's what Roland Park has done. And that's what I will continue to do as a council member from Ward 3. Another Kansas value that I appreciate is combining the social progressiveness with economic ingenuity. Roland Park has been a leader in Johnson County when it comes to social progress, and now it needs to be a leader in economic development. We need to strengthen our local economy and commit to diversifying our businesses. This way we will ensure that not one business holds the fate of our city in its hands. A more vibrant business community needs economic growth and more revenue from our sales tax, and I'm the candidate that can lead this economic change. You know, Kansas politics traditionally, not so much anymore, but traditionally Kansas politicians were common sense politicians, and they were willing to work across party lines, <laughs> and they worked with others with whom they didn't always agree, and the, the, the goal was to reach the best solution for the community, and that's what I would do, and that is what Roland Park needs right now. There's enough partisanship in Washington, there's enough partisanship in Topeka, and we don't need it here on our city council. I promise to listen to the residents, all of the residents of Ward 3, and work with all council members to reach the best solution for our community. You know, I didn't come into this race with an agenda beyond providing the best representation I can for all of the residents of Ward 3. And there's no place for running a campaign of fear and divisiveness. We, when we all want what's best for Roland Park. Roland Park knows what's best for Roland Park. And because the state I love is moving away from this partisanship, excuse me, away from this common sense and towards partisanship, we need to make sure that Roland Park retains local control over its amenities and services and remains committed to serving all of its residents. My professional background, my common sense approach, and my willingness to work with others make me the best candidate to serve Ward 3 for the next four years, and I'd ask for your vote on April 7th. Thank you very much, Ms. Thompson. We will now hear the closing remarks from Mr. Buckley. First, let me thank all of you for showing up here. I wasn't sure how many people were going to turn out tonight. Wow, I mean, you guys really give me faith in the future of our city, so thank you, thank you very much. Um, I want to address something a little bit differently. I mean, um, a lot of people ask me, so where are you, Blake? Uh, I look around town, I don't see any street signs. What's up with that? Um, I made a decision early on in my campaign, actually the day I was filing my paperwork to become a candidate. You know, there's all sorts of forms that have to fill out for this deal. And one of them was like, you know, so if you're going to spend under 500 bucks, you can fill out this form. and. Um, and, and you're kind of done with your campaign finance stuff. I'm like, dude, am I really going to spend 500 bucks on this deal? And looking at what, you know, I've learned a lot more about what all of this costs since then. And I'm kind of running it on a uh, champagne wishes on a beer belly budget, so to speak. And so you're not going to see a lot of yard signs. I tried to make some yard signs last week, and I went and bought some stuff at Lowe's, and they didn't turn out so hot. It came out kind of pink. Um, so, if you do anything tonight after you leave here, please talk up my candidate, see if you think I'm worth voting for. Talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends. Um, I would appreciate your vote. I'm going to work my tail off for you if you do vote for me. Um, and I'm sending out a postcard, my one mailing that I can afford to you know, drop some cash on. Uh, I'm, I'm holding on to it until close to election day because, like I said, I can only afford one. So, um, I'm coming at this earnestly and honestly, um, but cheaply. And so, uh, please look beyond that. Please, again, talk to me, your friends, your neighbors, and I would really, really appreciate your vote come April 7th. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Gordon. 
At this time, that includes the Roman Park. <laughs> I'd also like to give a special thanks to the Prairie Village Post for assisting and supporting. Uh, they will be providing ongoing coverage of this election throughout the week and all the way up to April 7th. Uh, we thank you all as a community for engaging. Without you, you allow this process to work because with the stakeholder feedback that you provide these candidates, that's how Roland Park moves forward and, and remains to be that vibrant community that you all want it to be. I thank you all for your attendance tonight, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you.